friends and welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I have a farmhouse video that's part of our first of the month collaboration. I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my sweet Oliver. And if you're returning, we are so happy you came back. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, you guys, I wasn't thinking this out but it turns out great but it was a little bit of a work so I started off with my chalk couture chalk paste in the color candy apple bright white and black velvet I am going to also use my Waverly chalk paints in the color white ink and then my Waverly antique wax I am also going to use two different uh, chalk couture transfers this one is called from the or farm farm to farm cutouts something like that and then this one is the chick in i am also going to use some of these giant craft sticks from walmart i'm going to use four of these wood craft pieces that come from dollar tree i think they're like 12 18 inches long something like that and then just a whole bunch of different wood uh, shapes that i had on, on hand so I started off by laying out those four wood strips and then I'm using my um, craft sticks here to attach them all as one unit. And I'm using my wood glue and my hot glue to attach those craft sticks to the longer sticks. After I was done and had them all connected, I painted it with my antique wax. I brushed it on and wiped it off. And then I painted some of those wood pieces with my ink and then some of them with white. And then after they were all dry, this is where the madness came in. I took my white ones here and I am just fuzzing my transfers. Now, if you're not familiar with Chalk Couture, it is an adhesive silk screen, silk screen transfer. And the reason why I fuzz it is because this is the first time I've used these. And if, because the adhesive is so strong, if I didn't fuzz them, it'd pull off the paint. So I give it a good fuzzing about five, six times. And then I just lay them on my wood pieces here. And then I'm making sure it's all straight. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my black or my black velvet chalk paste and my squeegee here. And I'm just going to go all over my um, transfers. Now my this chalk paste is getting old and it's getting very thick. I did spritz it with some water. Um, but I probably should have spritzed a little bit more because when I did pull up, it was a little splotchy on that one, especially on the first one I did. I did have to do a little bit of touching up on it, um, but I do need to order, which I just ordered some more black chalk paste yesterday. Um, so hopefully I won't have that issue anymore, but I should just add more water anyways. So once I have this all done, and if you're interested in chalk couture, by the way, I am a designer, so you could always check my links in my description box or email me if you have any questions, I'd be happy to share with you. Okay, so I'm just removing my transfers here and then I went and washed them. Now this is why I said it was crazy because I had to wash all of those. Uh, it was not very fun. <laughs> anyways, so I had these all laid out. I took a picture of how I wanted these laid out when I was playing around with it. So I'd remember how they were laid out. And I'm just using my wood glue and hot glue to adhere each one of them. Now, if you don't have chalk couture transfers, you could always do this with regular uh, stencils. You could do this with stickers, with rub-on transfers, with um, your Cricut. There are so many ways you could do this. In fact, I wanted, I have a small wooden windmill windmill that I wanted to add on one of these, but I cannot find it for the life of me. I had it out just a week, couple weeks ago. I was going to use it and now I can't find it. So um, yeah, but you, there are so many things that you could, you could even just do wood shapes instead. You know, if you have any wood cutouts, you could use that um, on top of your wood pieces. That would be really cute too. You could even just use different papers. There's so much that you could do with this. I, yeah, I wanna do another one and make it a little different. But anyway, so once I had them all glued on, I took some more of my ink paint by Waverly and I'm just doing a dry brushing all around the black, I mean, sorry, the white uh, 
pieces and I should have done this before I glued them all on but you guys know how many times I forget and then when I get it on I'm like oh I should have distressed that <laughs> so once I was done I just took some twine and I'm just making some teeny bows here because I forgot to fill in the holes on this oval piece uh, before I painted it with some spackling so I'm just going to cover them up with my little bows like I normally do but I like it because I think it gives it a little bit more interest and then after that I just took some of this black and red buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree I'm stapling it to the back and that's all there was for that I really love how this came out I think it is so fun and it just shows you a little bit of farmhouse it's a farmhouse collage <laughs> you have let me know what you think about this in the comment box below Okay, so every month I get together with my friends Amanda with six kids and a glue gun and Chantel with Crafty Hints and we host a playlist. This month's theme is Farmhouse Decor. So make sure if you have not checked out their channels, make sure you check them out. Show them some love, subscribe, and then make sure you check out all the videos in the playlist. I'll have links to all of them in the description box below. So here's DIY number two. Okay, so this one, I am going to use my Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink and my Waverly Antique Wax. I'm going to use one of these wall decor flowers that I just recently, that's a metal flower, I found at Dollar Tree. They had some bigger ones and smaller ones. And then some of these letters that I got from Hobby Lobby, $1.47 for two of them. And then one of these MDF pieces from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to start off by painting that MDF piece with my ink and then I went over all of those letters with my antique wax. After they were all dry, I also took some of those little cubes from Dollar Tree and co covered them with the antique wax. And I'm just going to hot glue uh, two of them behind each letter just like you see me doing here. Now I had them all laid out on top of that MDF piece because I was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to lay them and where they were going to all go. So after I had the little blocks on my H here, I'm just adding some wood glue on the bottom of those blocks and then I'm just going to use my hot glue and run it along the bottom of that H just like you see. And I'm going to hot glue it to where the, or I'm going to glue it to where the, the little uh, cubes are right at the edge of the back of that MDF piece. And I'm going to, I did the same thing with the M and I'm going to do the same thing with the E. I started again with the E because I wanted to work from the ends to the middle. And then after I have this done, I'll add the flower. Did you notice my brand new heat gun or glue gun? My other one finally died on me. I know I was having problems with it. I thought I fixed it, but the other day I was trying, when I was doing the collage, I was trying to use it and it wasn't wanting to push out the glue. So I have a new one. <laughs> okay, so here I'm adding the blocks for the um, flower. And I was just using my finger there to, um, I kind of measured it with where the flower, where I was going to put it. And I used my finger to measure where to put those blocks. Um, the flower I did bring up a little bit forward. I did bring up all the way forward. And you'll see why when I add it. So I'm just doing the same to the E and the M that I did with the H. I'm just adding the wood glue and then I'm just adding the hot glue along the bottom of my letters there and then just adding that to the to where the cubes touch the right at the end or the back end of that sign or the MDF piece. So here I'm using a uh, super glue gel. I'm putting it on the cube and then I'm just seeing where I'm going to have my petals uh, that are overlapping on that um, MDF piece and I added them and I was going to spritz it. I, I'm using my accelerator and usually you spritz it once you attach both but that wasn't working so I just spritz the back of my petals and then I just used my fingers to hold it down and it gets hot so I could tell it was working because my metal was getting a little hot not to where it was burning but it, I could tell it was working and then I just wiped off the excess of that accelerator now I have that accelerator in my Amazon store if you're interested in checking it out then I took some of this buffalo check ribbon and I'm just going to hot glue it along the base here. I'm just putting some hot glue in different areas just to keep that ribbon tacked down. And then I was able to just kind of bring that ribbon kind of up under that uh, flower a little bit where before the glue was attached to the flower in the the wood piece or MDF piece. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then I'm just going to finish hot gluing that on. Then I felt like it needed just a little bit of something else. I was going to put this bow on that uh, base, but um, my husband and I, we were playing around with it, and I thought he really liked it on the middle of the flower. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of like it too. So I just used my super glue and my accelerant here, hold it down for about seven to 10 seconds and then it is done. And there it is. I really love how this came out. I had no idea what I was going to do with this. I had no idea what I was going to do for this DIY anyways. And this just all came to me and I love how it came out. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. I just want to take a moment to thank all my subscribers. You guys mean the world to me. And if you're new here and enjoy today's video, I would ask that you would hit that subscribe button before you go. It doesn't cost you anything and it means the world to me. And then make sure you guys give me that thumbs up, comment, and watch those ads that all help support my channel and help push my videos out for more for others to see. And then if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find my links to my social media accounts as well as all my affiliate accounts in the description box below. Okay, here is DIY number three. So for this DIY, I'm gonna use my Waverly chalk paints in the color ink and white. I was gonna use crimson, but I changed it out for my antique wax and I'm glad I did. I'm gonna use these two inch wood letters that I get in a pack from Hobby Lobby. And then one of these little wood pieces I got, I think I got them a while ago, but I think I got it from 24 Hour Crafts. And then this sign was from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start off by removing that cardboard truck that was there. And then I'm getting, I'm using my heat gun here to remove it and then also to scrape off all of that glitter. After I had it scraped off, I did remove some of the paper on the back just because it overhangs from the edge and I hate that and I don't wanna see it. So once I was done, I'm just uh, removing the hanger. They have these teeny tiny little staples, which I need to find out where they get those staples in the staple gun because that's what I need. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to paint the backside with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And once I have it all painted and dried, I am taking a ruler and a pencil and I am marking a halfway or half inch marks. So I want to make like a border. So it kind of looks like a frame. So I just kind of went all the way around. I didn't make lines all the way around except for on this rounded part just because I felt like it would be easier to put tape uh, my my painters tape down if I had this part marked but I just made a few marks along the straight edges because I just wanted to have a, a point of where I lay my uh, tape so I know that it's straight so I'm just going here and I'm taping off uh, my whole sign here so that way I can just paint the edge. And then after that, I took my antique wax and I just painted all around it. I did not wipe it off or the excess off. I just painted around it. I just love the look of the antique wax over white paint. Sometimes I feel like it makes a little look a little more like wood. Then I took all my letters and I put it on some painter's tape and I'm just painting them all with my ink. And then um, as you can see there, there's an F with a little wood piece that's because I didn't have any more E's and so I took another F and cut off the top line so that I can glue it to the bottom of my F to make it look like an E. <laughs> and so then after I had that all painted, I cut the chicken off of the pig and I, I was trying to be really careful because I didn't want to cut the pig's ears off. And then I thought, well, why don't I just turn it over and cut it that way? <laughs> that worked a little bit better. But uh, once I had that off, I painted that black as well. And then I'm just using my square ruler here to keep my letters straight. You can also use a level if you have a level. I've seen other people do that. And I thought, what a great idea. <laughs> so I'm just using my wood glue and hot glue here to attach my letters onto my sign. And then I also attached the chicken with the hot glue and the wood glue as well. And of course, if you probably all know, the wood glue is for permanent hold and the hot glue is for immediate hold. After I have all of my letters on here, I am going to add a, um, some twine. I just, this is that braided jute cord that I get from Amazon. I tied some knots on the end and hot glued them down. And then I cut out some shipping paper that I get from Dollar Tree. And I am just going to hot glue it all the way around the back because who wants to see all that ugly mess? <laughs> and I just made sure that it went over my hanger too. If you 
hot glue it to the hanger, sometimes it can cause the, the paper to pull away. So that's why I did it underneath the paper. And then after I have this all on there, I took an X-Acto knife and my little um, cutting mat and I just went around and trimmed off all the excess paper uh, that was on the edges there. And that's all there was for this. I really love how this came out. I feel like it looks really high end. In fact, it probably would look even better if I had like a D hook in the back or something and you didn't see it hanging, but I love it. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, so it is a time for celebration of your recreation. And Mama Nanny made this chair. She used uh, a chair from Hobby Lobby as a guide and oh, she did an amazing job. Thank you. And then Cindy, she has been busy. Look at she recreated my breakfast club, but all of them, those those lanterns are gorgeous, girl. Okay, <laughs> thank you, ladies. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase for you, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger, and I am always thrilled to showcase them for you. And I'm always thrilled to get those emails and to see what everybody's creating. Okay, here's DIY number four. Oh, I love this one too. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use this napkin. I got this from decoupagenapkin.com. If you haven't checked them out, check them out because they have amazing napkins. I'm going to use my Waverly uh, chalk paints in the color white, ink, and antique wax. And then I'm going to use uh, this Farm Fresh sign. This comes from Dollar Tree. They have it in a package of let words every fall. And then this cutting board that I got, I believe, from... Uh, um, Walmart for like five dollars so I took out the hanger there and then I'm just going to cut out my napkin now one of the things that I love about their napkins is most of their napkins have the four sides have the same design so if you get one napkin it's like getting four designs I, I love it it's and they're not expensive at all so after that I am just kind of measuring where I'm going to have my chicken and I'm just kind of going to place my painter's tape right so that I can have the bottom part white because we know if, if you paint it a different color it's not going to show through as much in fact my original thought was to keep it not paint the bottom part but then I thought oh then you're not going to see the chicken as well it's not going to stand out as well so I went ahead and used my painter's tape to tape it all off and then I'm going to paint the bottom part with my white and the top part with my ink color after it was all painted and dried I took my napkin and I'm just going to fussy cut all the way around my chicken now I thought about using the water uh, brush technique but I didn't want any of that gray I wanted just the chicken itself so that's why I'm going around and I am cutting all the way around this and you guys I have my video sped up a lot on this part that's how slow I was cutting because <laughs> it doesn't look very fast there so after he was all cut out, I just took the, the decoupage napkins uh, dot com. Their napkins always have two plies behind the, the one picture. So I took both plies off and then I'm just kind of placing this where I want to lay it. Um, oh, I don't know if I showed this. I added Mod Podge once it was all dry. I don't know what happened. I thought I showed that. Um, and I let the Mod Podge dry on my cutting board. And now I'm just using my uh, parchment paper and my heat press to reactivate that Mod Podge. And look how cute that is. Then I went and covered it again with some more Mod Podge just to help protect that napkin so it doesn't tear or rip. I love it. I just think it's so cute. If I would have had a word that said hello, I would have probably put that on there because it looks like he's saying, hey, what you doing? <laughs> so I just uh, use my little finger sander to sand off all the excess napkin on the end there. And then I took my Farm Fresh sign here and I'm using my antique wax. I'm just going to brush it all on and then I'm going to wipe it off with my paper towel there. And that's all there is for that one. It's super, super easy. I love the antique wax. I just... I don't know. I love that wood look. And then after I have that all done, I am going to use my wood glue and my hot glue to attach this to the top part of my cutting board on uh, right in that black area, the area that was painted black. And after that, I know I'm taking a while. I should have maybe cut some of this out. I'm sorry. I say that every every video. I should have cut some of this out. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, once I have this all on there, look how cute that is. I took some of this braided jute cord and I'm going to hot glue it just along where the white and black paint meet. Just like you see me doing there. It's just given a little bit more dimension, a little bit more interest. And I love it. I love that chicken. It is just cracks me up every time I look <laughs> Look at it. And you know, so funny, I almost didn't get this napkin because I thought it just looked so busy with those eggs. But when you cut that chicken out, oh my gosh, it is just adorable. Anyways, I'm going to take some more of that cord and I'm going to hot glue it to the back and I'm going to wrap it around. I think I wrapped it around that neck about three, maybe four times. And then um, I did use my lighter to burn off some of the fuzzies. And I used some tumbling tower blocks. Did I show that? I don't remember. Maybe I did. Uh, I hot glued them to the back of this so that it would sign, uh, stand up. And that's all there was for this one. But I absolutely love this one too. A quick note for you guys. At the end of the video, I do have a little video of Oliver if you want to watch. Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty cute. So <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm just finishing this up here. And no, I didn't show. I did add some tumbling tower blocks on the back. I don't know what happened to that video. But anyways, there it is. I love it. It is so cute. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. And here is your final reveal of today. Make sure you check out Amanda and Chantel's channels and the playlist. And I will be back again on Saturday with a really fun uh, video that you do not want to miss. And with all that being said, you guys, I hope you have a blessed day, a blessed rest of your weekend. Stay tuned to see Oliver at the end, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, so as we were opening the pool the other day, Oliver thought he needed to attack this milk jug that was floating in the pool. What is that? <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it, Oliver?